because I am I'm terribly afraid said therapist is going to fix me and then I will look back on the previous 52 years of my existence and realize that I wasted them by being on John's TV show. And I like don't the key or something. Oh, it's time to start. Oh, get off the get, get off get off the screen. Now the show is starting. You don't Sorry everyone. Uh, we uh, on our 4,000th show, we have to let someone else be on camera. Uh, otherwise, the government shuts us down. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to November 2018. Uh, I want you to know, before the show, uh, the nice lady uh, did, the ho did the hair combing thing to make sure my hair looked good. And then she did the she did the, the 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 oil rag and the powder thing to make my face not be shiny. And the whole time she was doing this, I didn't tell it to her, uh, but the whole time she was doing this, I was like, "This is the craziest thing in the world," because today's a double shower day. Like most days, most days are single shower days, and occasionally, if I'm particularly lazy on weekends, no shower day. Uh, not many of those. But it does happen every once in a while. Uh, but today, today's a two-shower day. And not, not for any reasonable reason whatsoever. Um, I got up this morning, and I knew I was going to see my trainer at the fitness center at 11. So in my head, I formed a plan. I was like, I'm going to get up. I'll have breakfast downstairs. I'll pull on some clothes. I'll bike over to the fitness center. Uh, maybe I'll stretch a little bit before the trainer. I'll do my trainer, and I'll shower. And then what happened is I got up, I went downstairs, I had breakfast. I made the plan in my head, have breakfast, go upstairs, get some clothes on, bike over to the fitness center, uh, stretch a little bit, see the trainer. Uh, but when I went upstairs, a habit took over, uh, and I got in the shower, spent a nice, luxurious 10 minutes showering, making sure I was clean everywhere, so I'd be presentable at work. Uh, then I, you know, did the, the spray deodorant thing. I brushed the teeth. I floss. So my dentist should be happy. Uh, I took the vitamins. I mean, I do all these things anyway, right? I hopped on my bike, got to the fitness center. Didn't have very much time for the stretching uh, because I had not accounted for the fact that I would spend 15 minutes showering or 20 minutes showering when you wrap up the before and after part. Then I did the exercise thing, and then after I finished exercising, I went down to the locker room and I showered again. I didn't realize until I was standing in the shower in the fitness center that I had already showered that day. And then I was like, this is crazy. I'm going to be so freaking clean today. I don't know why I needed to be powdered, but apparently I did in spite of the double shower. So if you, I guess that's that thing. Um, uh, here's another funny thing that happened. Uh, I've talked before uh, about how, how I have a Kickstarter problem. Uh, how I go to Kickstarter and I see something and I'm like, I would like that. I have money. Tappy, tappy, tappy. And then like two and a half years later, a box shows up. And I'm like, oh yeah, I backed that. And they finally mailed it to me. Okay. I forgot how cool it was. And it, it's not... Like two years ago, it would have been really cool if I had it, but now it's kind of blasé, but I get over it. That's happened many times, because I have backed, like Kickstarter gave me a special little badge. They were like, hey, you get a little extra woofy because you have been dumb many, many times. Um, recently, I'm sitting in my house, uh, and I back the Kickstarter, the box shows up, and I'm like, hey, woo, I got that thing that makes ultra clear ice cubes, which I guess I can make ultra clear ice cubes in my house. That'll be, I'll put them in my adult beverages, which I do enjoy. Uh, and then like a day later, I turned to Laura and I told her, hey, guess what I got on Kickstarter? And then I showed her the box. And then she was like, oh, go look in the kitchen on the thing, and then I went in the kitchen, and there was, a, there was another box, the exact same size, which contained another thing for making ultra clear ice cubes. Because she, she had seen the Kickstarter and thought, 
hey, I can get that for him for Christmas or his birthday or whenever it shows up. And then, so it's, I'm trying to write a short story about this, like the Kickstarter of the Magi. Uh, I don't, I don't have any like emotional hook at the end, like where Loretta bought me the ice cubes, but she sold the beverages and I sold the beverages to get the ice. No, we've just got two ultra clear ice cube makers, which are somewhat large. And so it's not like we can make twice as many ultra clear ice cubes in our freezer because only one of them will fit in the freezer at most. And the number of ultra clear ice cubes I need is really satisfied. So I guess what we're saying is if you know me and if you get a present this Christmas and if it's a ultra clear ice cube maker, you'll know you were the friend who we thought most likely to enjoy an ultra clear ice cube making set. Um, uh, speaking of that, uh, not in any real way, uh, but the ultra clear ice cubes were sitting on our couch. Uh, our couch has a problem in that it likes to consume and hide things uh, and secret them away for many months. Uh, which I ordinarily would want until I finally managed to find how our couch has secreted them away in whatever fashion it does. Uh, most recently, I, I got tired of having to pull my phone out every night to control my Apple TV. So I finally sprung, I finally went and bought another remote for my living room Apple TV and I brought it home. I was like, I'm tired of losing this thing. So I bought one of them little tracker things and I stuck it on the back of the Apple remote, thereby essentially doubling the size of the Apple remote. But I'm like, well now, now if the couch decides to eat this remote, I can just tappy tappy on the phone and find it. And now I can sit in my living room and I can just get the Apple remote and type and swipey swipey and go around. It's, it, it's, it's somewhat better than before. And when the parents visit, it's much better because they cannot figure out how to use their phones to control the Apple TV. So victory in that now the Apple TV is controllable. So now fast forward like a week, we're sitting in the living room and we're, we're Apple TVing. I think we were watching The Good Place on Netflix or something. And like we would hit play. And then like I would, I would reach down to control my recliner. And every time I shifted in my recliner on the couch, the TV would change channels. Or the Netflix would pause. Or it would turn on closed captions. And then I was like, so clearly I'm like the remote is under my, but then I look over and the remote's sitting next to me and it's not being touched at all. So then I was like, well, great. I bought a crappy buggy remote that just occasionally is fritzing out and telling my Apple TV to pause or to go back to the menu or whatever. And that went on for like two days when I would be, I would just be on the couch and then the Apple TV would be flaky and I would be like frickin' Apple remote. And then eventually it, it occurred to us, it only happened when one of the two of us somehow moved, even though the remote was sitting there utterly unmoving. And then I put my engineer brain to it, and I was like, that other remote is still here somewhere in the couch. And as we shift, it is somehow getting pressed or knocked or whatever. So then I had to find the remote. And that took a good 25 minutes of flashlights and peering into little crevices and reaching down and being terrified that I would be trapped with my arm buried six feet into a weird reclining couch. You know, an embarrassing nine. I mean, the good thing I thought when I was kind of, you know, reaching down to try to find it somewhere was, well, at least if I get trapped, I have my phone to call 911 in the other hand. So I could just, like, all I have to do is get the thumb on the button 
and then tappy, tappy, tappy. Uh, and then I was like, well, wait, wait, I think you can like hold down the button on your watch and it'll call 911. I was like, ah, but the problem is the watch is the thing that's stuck on the end of the arm, like a foot and a half into the couch, which is now trapped. Luckily, uh, I freed the arm. Uh, and after like 25 minutes, I finally found the original remote, which has been missing for like five months. So good on that battery and bad on, you know, it being in this one exact spot where it was almost impossible to see. Uh, the couch eats things. I mentioned the remote. Um, my wallet disappeared for a week once. Uh, I eventually discovered, you know, deep in the recliner. Um, here's, here's the funniest one of all the couch stories. Um, after the couch and my house in general started eating things, it occurred to me I should buy more of those little tile things that I could attach to things. And then you could pull out your phone and you could be like, hey, has anyone seen my keys? And you can tap the button, then it'll make a little chirping noise, and you can wander around your house, as long as you haven't gone totally deaf. And you can eventually get an idea for what room they're in. Then you can wander around the room and be like, I think they're over on that side, and then you can find them. I bought a thing of tiles, uh, and then the couch ate them. Which I know because after I bought the tiles, it was like a week later, and I was like, well, we got to start putting those tiles on things, and I couldn't find them. Now here's the problem, until you activate them, you, you can't use the tile app to find them. So for like two months, I knew somewhere in my house, I had a complete set of tiles ready to be installed on things, but I could not find them. Because again, they had slipped down between two of the cushions. Eventually I found them. Uh, addendum to that funny story, I still haven't activated any of them or put them on things because I'm too busy. Uh, that's the couch. Um, like I said, it's November. Uh, November means we just finished October. Uh, October for me is, is a great month because it starts to get cooler in October, so it's not ungodly hot. Uh, and then you have Halloween at the end of the month. Uh, Halloween is, is the day we got married, uh, which we did because we already had a party planned. And the whole reason we didn't get married for a long time is we didn't want to have to plan a wedding or a reception or figure out who to invite. So we just, we already had a party. We're like, heck, let's get married. We'll tell everyone at the party. It was great. Uh, and since the date of Halloween is always the same day, we will always remember when we got married. Not the year, though. Like, we have turned to each other more than once and went, how long have we been married? <coughs> before we eventually figured out it was four years ago. So I went to my little calendar app and I put a note in the event that tells me when. So now all of my problems are solved with respect to that. Uh, anyway, for Halloween, we have this party every year. We invite all our friends over. Uh, we make up a theme. We're like, hey, this year the theme is TV characters from the 80s. Uh, and then some of our friends dress up as TV characters from the 80s. Some of our friends dress up as other people. Uh, one of our friends puts a My Name is Bob sticker on every year and shows up and thinks that this is a costume. And we all humor him as if it were a real costume. It's not. It's just, it's just a sticker named My Name is Bob. Like if, like if, if there had been a TV show in the 80s called Hi, I'm Bob then it would have worked. But there wasn't a TV show in the 80s called Hi, I'm Bob. I mean, Bob Newhart could have said he was Bob New. He kind of looks like Bob Newhart with the gray hair. He just wore in a freaking sweater thing and talked about writing books. It would have worked, but no, he didn't. Just, hi, my name is Bob. Anyway, uh, uh, as with every Halloween, uh, we have the party. Uh, drinks were consumed, uh, food was consumed, a good time had by all. Uh, the police didn't have to get called, so all around a great time. Um, thankfully, uh, Halloween party wasn't actually the day of Halloween. So on actual Halloween, you know, we sit in front of our house and try and give stuff away to children. And it's, it's a struggle because where we live, 
people don't show up with their, like a block over. There's hundreds of kids show up at every house looking for candy. But you come to our townhouse complex and we get very few children. We don't know why. So we're, we're trying to up the neighborhood score. So, you know, we get our little table, put a little table in our driveway. We got little chairs. We have little inflatable lighted things. You can see from a little ways away that maybe there's someone there. And we have a big boo that we hang from the thing. And we, we again gave out comic books and fidget spinners. Um, Loretta goes out and buys a bunch of comic books. She does a bunch of research. She's like, I need comic books for like 10 to 13 year olds and comic books for like five to eight year old girls and some little appear to little boys and some little appeal to girls. She has this box and she has organized them into the little, she makes a little glassine envelope for each one. I don't think she puts boards in because they're tiny, but she could have for all I know. Um, she's got the comic books, very organized, very professional. Um, the last two years, uh, I have bought fidget spinners, lots of fidget spinners. Uh, last year, I think I bought 300 fidget spinners. Why 300? Because they were selling them in quantities of, I think, 100. And I was allowed to buy up to three, which is why I got 300 fidget spinners. And then... What was I going to do with 300 fidget spinners? I don't know. I mean, you I talked about my whole Kickstarter thing. You know I'm not smart at purchasing things. I. Uh, and then last year we took a bunch of the, we gave fidget spinners away for a while. I took them to work and gave people fidget spinners. Uh, and then we took them on the boat and we gave people fidget spinners. Uh, this year, I'm sitting in my house uh, and, and I'm looking at math. And again, they have fidget spinners. And I was like, okay, we're doing this. And then I ordered, uh, I think it was 360 fidget spinners uh, from Meh this time. Uh, three sets of 120, because that's how you can buy. And then they showed up in my house. Uh, and then after they showed up, they sent me an email that went, uh, we've discovered after we mailed all these fidget spinners out that they were kind of really crappy fidget spinners. So we're giving you a coupon for most of what you spent on fidget spinners which you can use to buy more stuff if you ever do. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy more stuff. So now I now I got, you know, 360 almost free fidget spinners. Uh, so then when they put up more fidget spinners, I bought those too. So now, now I have 720 fidget spinners. Well, probably around 700 fidget spinners in my house because we, we gave away about 15 or 20 of them on Halloween last night. Uh, 700 fidget spinners is a substantially tall pile of boxes of fidget spinners. Uh, it's, it's in a little landing in my stairwell because I know they have to go upstairs, uh, but I only got them halfway to the, to the landing of my stairway, and I've actually got to get them the rest of the way upstairs so I can get them out of the way because I do not have room in my house for, you know, five months for a pile of boxes yay high of, of 700 fidget spinners uh, is what I'm saying. I, I have looked at what the world record for simultaneous fidget spinning is. I think I have enough fidget spinners that if we could give one fidget spinner to 700 people and then we could all spin the fidget spinners at the same time, we would, in fact, be Guinness World Record simultaneous fidget spinning people. So that's my plan. My plan is somehow uh, I get 698 friends because Bob, Bob will probably come with me. That's two of us. Maybe Loretta, three. I need like 697 simultaneous fidget spinning friends, and we can be in the Guinness Book of World Records as... Yeah, something really dumb. Uh, that was Halloween. We had like we had like uh, like 19 kids came to our house to get stuff, which is practically a record, uh, only bested by last year when we had I think 20 odd something. Ah, what else? Um, okay, so I have uh, next topic is vacation homes. Um, 
every once in a while, uh, Loretta turns to me or I turn to Loretta and we say, we should, we should buy a vacation home somewhere so we can go there and get away from it all. Um, eventually we come to our senses uh, and Loretta reminds me that I hate going places. Uh, and so I'm unlikely to actually go to a vacation home if I owned it, even though it occur even though I have all these memories of going to my aunt's and uncle's vacation homes as a child. Uh, I also have a friend that is occasionally looking for a new house to buy, uh, and so she would send me pointers to listings, and I would look at them, and I'd be like, oh, that's that place looks nice, two-bedroom condo, $170,000. Got a garage, it's got a little bit of land. If that was in California, you would add a one in front of that price. It would be $1,170,000, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, it's great that you could. Uh, and so I have been on a fair number of real estate websites in the last four or five months. So much so that they now assume I want to buy something somewhere. So they. They send me an increasingly large number of emails with new listings and price drops and other things, just, just in case I still want to know, hey, is that house you looked at three months ago still something you're looking at? And I'm like, well, I can't do my job from there, so no. And then Loretta has also, Loretta would like like, Loretta's like, well, we should buy a house near my family so we could visit them. So I have also looked at places there. When I was young uh, in Wisconsin, you know, we, I grew up in a standard uh, suburban home, you know, with a driveway and a little front lawn. And, and there were some homes on the outside of town that were very large, had big lots, many, many, many trees, the kind of the kind of house that you would actually need a riding lawnmower if you owned it because you could never push a lawnmower that much to mow the entire thing. The grass at the point you started would have grown back before you could finish with that little push lawnmower. So you'd buy a riding lawnmower and you'd drive around with your little hat and you'd mow it and feel like the king of your castle or whatever. I had always assumed that these homes were ungodly expensive, uh, which for everyone in the rest of the country is true. Uh, but for people in California, looking at what a 20-acre, eight-bedroom house half an hour outside of St. Louis, they're very affordable if you're willing to sell your California house and move there. And then, then I would be that rich moron uh, with the riding lawnmower, which again, I would have to own because I cannot push a lawnmower. So much space. I, I'm getting so much email. Like, like the real, they're beginning to get desperate because they're like, you haven't bought anything yet. <sighs> what else? I got four minutes, right? Ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, I'll talk about stuff we've done instead of stuff we own. Uh, like a month ago, we went and saw this musical on your feet, Gloria Estefan. Gloria Estefan music, uh, whatever. I may have even talked about that last time. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we went and saw this musical called Waitress, which I believe is based on a movie called Waitress, which might have been based on a book called Waitress. I didn't follow the trail down that far. Uh, I never saw the movie, although I think I remember seeing the commercials for the movie on TV. And based on the commercials, I assumed it was kind of like a rom-com with a waitress and pie. Uh, and having seen the musical, I'm pretty sure the movie is a rom-com with a waitress and pies, but I bet the movie has a lot fewer songs in it than this, this musical we saw. Uh, the musical's already left, uh, so I don't think you need to go see it up in San Francisco. And unless you really like rom-coms, don't go see it. Also up in San Francisco, uh, we went this this a couple weeks ago. Um, every year they have this thing called Folsom Street Fair uh, in the, the gay leather district. Uh, and I've heard of it for 25 years since I moved to California. I'd never been, because I, I didn't know if I was the kind of person that should go to a gay leather festival in San Francisco. 
kind of interesting. Loretta and I went up early. Loretta did a lot of walking, so we had Loretta in her wheelchair. We were pushing her around. There were a lot of uh, naked people at Folsom Street Fair, just walking around on the street, and I respect them. I was not one of them. Uh, I had a lot of suntan lotion on and uh, long pants. I might have had a sweater on, or a sweatshirt. I probably had a sweatshirt, because I always wear a sweatshirt. Ah, <sighs> what else did I say? Uh, there's lots of... St once, once, once I got past the idea that there were a lot of very scantily clad people here, it turned into really just an ordinary festival with all of these booths where you could buy stuff uh, and places where you could buy food uh, and places where you could buy adult beverages. Um, I, I rather liked the fact that you could buy not only beer and wine at a beer and wine thing, but they had actual cocktail booths where you could buy, you know, margaritas and a couple, something with strawberries in it. It was great. We'd, we'd kind of push our way from one cocktail booth to the next, and then we would get there, and we would say, I would like number two. And then they would give us a number two, and then we would, we would slowly walk down to the next one, drinking our things, looking at the people, buying some stuff in the booths. <sighs> Loretta, uh, as I mentioned, in a wheelchair, uh, had a slightly different perspective uh, than I did, which is she was basically at groin height um, so that she said there was a lot of stuff to look at uh, some stuff there was a lot of stuff to look at is what she said um, uh, at at one end uh, they had kind of a whole like a dance thing and there were people standing on barrels dancing to loud house disco music waving flags and there were people in the street dancing to loud I, I'm not a gay man, but it, it, it appears my musical tastes mesh almost 100% uh, with what uh, gay music played at festivals is. Because every time we got near that end, I was like, this is great music, man. And I was, the thing, and I was like, I could get up, the, if you gave me a flag, uh, and if I was in shape, I could do the flag flag thing and I could dance around and people would, it's, we're out of time. Uh, it's, it's been great having y'all here. Um, uh, we may or may not tape in December. I don't know. It gets kind of crazy, uh, as you know. Uh, but if, if we do, I'll see you in December. If not, I'll see you in January. Have a nice time, everyone. Uh, where was I? Now, do you want to, come, come on, come on, John. Come on, John. See you next week, Steve. On my show. Yo, yeah, yeah, and, and I'll be on John's show.